Recently, I've read a story about a doctor who was to receive an award for his medical research. And the medical research place that he had to travel to to receive this award, he had to travel by plane. So he gets on the plane and he's starting to make his journey and an hour into the flight, the plane starts to malfunction. And the pilot comes on the intercom and says, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to make an emergency landing at the nearest airport. So they make the emergency a landing at the nearest airport. He gets off his flight, grabs his luggage, goes to the desk and asks the person at the desk when the next flight to where he had to go was. The person replied, doesn't leave for another 10 hours. But we rent cars. And the place that you wanted to go is only about a three hour drive from here. So the doctor decides that he's going to rent this car and start his journey. So he puts his luggage in the back of the car and starts to drive and about 30 minutes goes by and it's a thunderstorm, heavy rain. So much so that he could not see. He ended up missing his turn that he was supposed to turn on. About two hours goes by. He realizes at this point that he is lost and he doesn't know where to go. He's down a deserted road. He's starting to get tired. He's starting to get hungry. And he finally just says, you know what? I need to find some place where I can stop. And during that time, as he was traveling down the road, he comes across this little old tattered house. He pulls his car over, gets out of the car, knocks on the door, and this old lady answers. He tells her the situation and asks if she had a phone that he could use. She says, no, I don't have a phone, and at this time I don't have any electricity either. But you're more than welcome to come in. I'll make you a cup of tea and give you something to eat. And the doctor thought to himself, okay. So he goes back to the car, shuts it off, goes inside and sits down at a table. And while he's sitting at the table, this lady is fixing just a piece of toast with some butter and a tea. And then she says, can I be excused? And he looks at her real puzzled and she goes over to the corner of the room where there's a candle lit and there's a crib in the corner. And she begins to pray. And when she's done her prayer, she begins to pray again. And this happened three times. And finally on the third time, this guy, the doctor, says, excuse me, but what are you praying for? And the lady says, I'm asking God to do one thing. He's answered all my prayers, but he hasn't answered one. And the doctor asks her, do you mind me asking you what is it that he hasn't answered? And the lady, the lady says, well, this is my grandson who has a rare type of cancer. We've gone to several doctors and the doctors don't know how to cure it. They keep telling me that there is a doctor but lives so far away that we're unable to travel to him to get the treatment that he needs. So, the woman continues to tell the doctor her situation and says 
that the doctor's name and who was supposed to help her grandson's name was Dr. Stephen. And upon hearing her words, tears began to flow down this doctor's cheeks. And he said, God is great. There was a malfunction in the plane, and a thunderstorm hit, and I lost my way. And all this happened because God didn't answer your prayer by helping you find a way to get to Dr. Stephen but that he brought Dr. Stephen to you. And tears started streaming down her face. Tonight, we're going to look at something that can happen in the absence of prayer. The absence of prayer. So take your Bibles and come with me to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse number 22. The Bible says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into his ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. I want you to notice that right off the top, that the Bible says that Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship. That word constrained means urged irresistibly or powerfully. In other words, Jesus told them to go into the ship. Did they listen? Well, in verse 24 we read, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. We notice that the disciples were obedient to the Lord, And that Jesus, after Jesus had sent the disciples away, he also sent the multitudes away at the end of verse 22. And then we see something very special. And I, and I believe this, this is a very special part in any of the scriptures because we see how important it is to pray. Especially when Jesus himself did it. Look with me in verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. If Jesus is the one that set the example for us, then we are supposed to be like Jesus. What are, some of the, what are some things that we can learn from this verse? Well, first of all, I want you to notice that Jesus made it a priority to pray. He set aside time to pray. In fact, there are a number of passages within the Gospels that tell us that Jesus made sure to pray in secret or discreetly. That tells me that having a relationship with our Heavenly Father is so important to walking with the Lord. Not only did Christ make it a priority, but He made sure that He was alone. So often we think that just because we pray with others, and we do pray with others, we pray with others tonight, or even with our spouses for that matter, that that is good enough. That is sufficient. But Christ set the example for us again and made sure that he may, 
went into the mountain and prayed by himself. No one was around. It wasn't for show. It wasn't because he had to, but it was because he wanted to and he needed to pray. He needed to pray. As we read in verse 24, we see that the disciples were in the midst of the sea. And it was being tossed with waves. The ship was. And the next verse gives us an idea of what time of night it was. The Bible says in verse 25, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. You know, the fourth watch is known as the darkest time. It's known as the darkest time. It's known just, just before the sun starts coming up, between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And it's no coincidence that the Lord chose this time to come to them. And at this point, they had been struggling all night. All night. And were no further than halfway across the sea. The Bible makes it very clear that they were in the midst of the sea. And if you were to take your Bibles and go to John chapter 6, verse 19, you would read that they had rowed five and twenty furlongs or thirty furlongs from where they left. Me being a math guy, a furlong is about 201.8 meters, all right? So if you were to take that number and multiply it by 25 or 30, the answer is five to six kilometers, all right? The Sea of Galilee is 13 kilometers wide. 13 kilometers wide. They were smack dab pretty much right in the middle of the sea. And all of that what we read, all the passages that we read, you can read Matthew 14, you could read Mark chapter 6, and you can read John chapter 6. Nowhere in any of those passages will you find that the disciples prayed. It's missing. Nowhere does it say that the disciples prayed. But we read that Jesus prayed. We have the absence of prayer. I want you to understand, yes, Jesus did tell them to go on the ship. Right? Would you guys agree with that? He's the one that told them to get on the boat. They did listen. But they forgot to acknowledge him in their times of trouble. They forgot to acknowledge him. Aren't we like that sometimes? God tells us to do something. We do it, but we forget to pray to him and ask us to help us to get through it. And because we don't pray, we may have to endure hardship or be in a situation longer than what we actually have to be in. Or maybe we forgot to pray the way things, and the, the way things happened shouldn't have happened that way and we think that we've made a mistake. We don't think that it's a success in the eyes of God. Prayer is something that needs to happen, that should happen, especially when you're doing what God told you to do. Remember how I said that it is recorded in three of the four Gospels? Now I want you to take your Bibles and come with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And 
the Bible says in verse 45, and straightway he constrained his disciples, there's that word constrained again, to get into the ship and to go to the other side before Bethsaida, while he sent them away, while he sent away the people, and when he had sent them away, he departed into the mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And verse 48, pay attention. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Did you catch that? He saw them struggling. He was watching. And I believe he was waiting for them to call on him. I know it's just conjecture, I know, but that's, that's what I believe. I believe he was just anticipating their call. And I believe that if God has told you to do something and you've left him out of the equation, then he too, or we may, he may watch us struggle until we realize that we can't do it on our own. We can't. We need to do it with God. Things are so much easier with God. How do I know? Well, let's take our Bibles and go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Again, this is the account, right? This is the same account. John chapter 6. Look at verse number 21. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went immediately. It's like they got in a big bass boat and all of a sudden the boat boom, right to where they had to go. That's the way it is with God. So much better, so much easier. In a matter of seconds, things that they couldn't do, they toiled all night but with Jesus, it made it so much easier. But you know what? There's a sad part in this whole passage. Between all three Gospels, Mark tells us, in Mark chapter 6, I want you guys to just take your Bibles, go back there. Mark chapter 6, look in verse number 51. And really, this is a, it's a heartbreaking passage because at this point, the disciples were in the ship. All right? They were just, they just came from feeding of the 5,000. Okay? They go into the ship. They're left out in the midst of the sea, struggling, rowing. Let's read what this says in verse 51. It says, And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. That is, that is what is the miracle that took place before they got sent out of the Sea of Galilee. They had witnessed the miracle, they were a part of that miracle. They saw Jesus continuously breaking bread and giving thanks to God, and yet they go out in the middle of the sea when things got tough, and yet they didn't look to God. They forgot to look to God. They forgot to pray. How many times in our life we get through a trial or we receive a blessing and we think that just because God has blessed us, we don't need to pray anymore. Or we don't need to thank Him for the small things that He's given us. Or maybe we think that we got through it on our own accord. Look at me. I just got through this. No, that's not the way it happens. 
It's God. The absence of prayer is real in Christians all over the world. And I've been guilty of this in my own life. But just like that old lady who prayed for God to get her to the doctor, we serve a God that can bring the doctor to us. Look, I know that I'm probably preaching things that you guys already know, but it's important for us to acknowledge God in everything. In everything. Doesn't matter how small, doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter how great or not great the situation is. We need to make sure that through it all, we acknowledge Him so that our prayer life is, that we're present in our prayer life, not absent. Let Him be a part of your life. He wants us to come to Him. Let's pray.